Today I want to tell you about my side project turned full-time job and see if there are suggestions I can have for you about how you can do the same. Almost two years ago I had an idea. It was a tiny idea, nothing brain melting here. Workshops for women who want to learn how to code. It actually wasn't even an original idea. Uh, the Pi Ladies in Los Angeles were my direct inspiration, and other groups had been doing this kind of thing for a while. But no one was doing it in my hometown of Toronto, Canada. I tweeted about the idea, and that's where this story begins. It actually wasn't that hard to get started. I created an email list about the, uh, the campaign, the idea. I organized a brainstorming session for people who were interested in helping out, whether they wanted to learn or teach or volunteer. And then I put tickets on sale for our first workshop. They sold out in a day, and the workshop was a hit. A couple months later, Ladies Learning Code was incorporated as a not-for-profit organization. Now, a little bit more than 18 months later, over 5,000 people in Canada have participated in one of our one-day workshops. That's like a really big percentage of our population. <laughs> Hundreds of developers uh, have volunteered full days at a time to help our beginner community learn how to code. We have chapters. Uh, across Canada now, Toronto, Vancouver, Ottawa, Halifax, London, Calgary, and a few more in the works. We also run workshops for girls, as well as camps uh, and other events, including technology sleepover parties. Uh, girls come and learn programming and web making skills from our volunteers and mentors, and I'm really certain that a bunch of these girls are going to go on to become professional developers. About a year ago, my team and I also founded a business called Hacker U. Uh, it is uh, basically a boot camp program. Uh, we offer three month long part time courses for people who want to learn either web development or Ruby on Rails. And honestly, that's nothing compared to what we have planned for the future. On a personal note, I now spend all of my time working on initiatives that I created. I spend most of my days thinking about new ideas and how I can turn them into reality. I also rarely wake up before 9 a.m. because I don't want to. And I often work from home because uh, that's what I like as well. So let's talk about how to create and harness momentum. First, you need to commit to a timeline publicly, whether that's a launch date or for us, it meant saying publicly we were going to do a workshop every single month. Uh, by saying it publicly, it means you really can't turn your back. If you do, you're going to run away with your tail wagging. The second thing is to nail the business model. The thing about ideas is that uh, it's really hard to go and keep going if you don't have the resources to support your idea. And so I encourage you, don't do things for free, ever, um, or if you do have a really good reason for doing it. For us, we've always charged $50 for our workshops, and that actually allows our organization to keep moving. Know when to say yes and when to say no. As the founder, you are the keeper of the vision and the protector of your team. And so that means you need to say no to opportunities sometimes. For us, when we launched Girls Learning Code, we heard from a lot of parents who said, you know, what about my son? What's he going to do? And for a long time, we didn't have an answer. Sorry, you know, was really all we could say to that. Uh, recently, we decided that we do now have the resources in order to do co-ed events for kids, and so we're going to start doing them. Uh, the idea is that you can always uh, enhance your product line later. Let your team find you. Out of the 20 people that work with Ladies Learning Code across the country in Canada, almost none of them you know, I reached out to personally. They came to me because they were interested and passionate about what Ladies Learning Code meant, what we stood for, and our plans for change. There's something really cool that happens when you bring together a very passionate group of people. Uh, it seems like the work that would normally take months or weeks can actually be done in days. And so for you with your projects, I would urge you to not always turn to your best friend or your colleague um, and ask them to join your team. Look in the community and see who out there is passionate about your idea, and you'll be able to get more done. Finally, never slow down. The thing about momentum is that it's like a fire. You constantly have to be fueling it. And so you always need to look at ways that you can offer, offer your customers more, better, faster, something different. Uh, it's the tricky thing about doing something innovative and different is that you, know, you really never get a break. So for those of you in the room with side projects, maybe something you started a month ago, a year ago, an event you wanted to organize, a meetup group you wanted to start. You got 80% of the way there. You launched. Uh, and then it sort of fizzled out, and you weren't as interested in, in keeping it going. This could be on your own or as part of something you do at your job in your company. My challenge to all of you 
is to pick that project back up because maybe it just needed a little bit of momentum. Thank you.